at this thing. If you know me and if you know this channel, this is not a kind of electric guitar you see that much on this channel. But here's the question. Is there secret knowledge or are there secret tricks that you don't know about for buying guitars that help you find cool guitars in real life for reasonable prices? <laughs> I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. Before we dig in, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you know when cool videos come up. So is there secret knowledge that you need to know in order to buy cool guitars? And if you don't know that secret knowledge, are you stuck only owning boring Guitar Center guitars for the rest of your life? No, absolutely not. There are key phrases and key point of views you need to maintain in order to find cool guitars in real life. So let's look at this Les Paul, let's restring it, and during that time I wanna tell you about the 30 year rule. This is the tool that I use to figure out which guitars can you buy now for a good discounted price and what will be really cool and really expensive coming up here soon. This is a badass rock and roll machine. This is a 1981 Gibson Les Paul Custom. So my friend Elliot found this and we're gonna go in together. I wanted to make a video about it. I wanted to talk about it. 81 Les Paul Custom. This is a tobacco sunburst. This is, what's cool is it has a sunburst front, back and sides, neck. Back of the headstock is also sunburst. And it has this giant abalone inlay on the headstock. So now, the question we are all going to ask is how much does it weigh? So let's try and get clever. It is pretty heavy. It's uh, 10 pounds, 13 ounces, about 11 pounds. Les Paul Customs are the Les Paul that you love and they have some really cool features that some people love and some people don't understand or don't really care that much about. They have the big block inlays on the fingerboard. They have ebony fingerboards. Uh, they're just a bit prettier. This has the Schallers. They have these little levers that help you tune down and restring the guitar. I think they're really cool, they're really handy. I used all of them on this guitar. This guitar, when I see it, it immediately takes me to Randy Rhodes, Brent Hines, heavy, cool, shreddy guitar playing. What's cool is this guitar still has a ton of clean mojo and can do some like overdrive things really well. This is the first Les Paul that I've ever really, really liked. Uh, I've owned a couple Les Pauls. They've never been quite my thing, but this one is really cool.
When I was a junior in high school, I, every day I had a study hall and I would go to the computer lab and I still remember it like, I still remember this burned into my memory. So I would go to Coheed and Cambria's website and I would listen to the song The Crowing and then I would flip over to Musician's Friend. I would look through just page after page of Les Paul Customs and dreamed of the day that I would get to own one. I wanted to talk about the 30 year rule. This is the most helpful way to figure out which guitars are going to be worth more money, which guitars people are going to want. If you are someone who is trying to find a way to buy and sell some guitars here and there, maybe you have some extra income or maybe you have a shop, here is the rule that I have used to figure out which guitars are going to be worth more money next. The trick is from today's date, go back 30 years and look at what guitars were popular in top 40 musicians, look at rock and roll charts, look at music videos, look at what was being played on stage at that point. Those guitars are going to always come back because there's this rhythm somewhere between like 18 to 24 year olds 30 years later that are 48 to 52 year olds. I'm impressed I did that math off the top of my head. I know it's not hard, it's add 30, but I'm pretty bad at math, guys. Uh, it doesn't bother me how bad I am at math. It does bother me how confident I am with my answers. But 30 years ago, high schoolers were idolizing guitar heroes, guitar legends, and they wanted to play those kinds of guitars. They went on, they got married, they had kids, they have a career, and now, 48 to 52, they are coming into, their kids are graduating from college if they had their kids young, and all of a sudden, they are making more money than they've ever made, they have more disposable income, and most of those people are picking up hobbies again. So, if you wanna figure out which guitars and gear are going to be worth more, are going to be cool, people are going to want, use the 30 year rule. So start looking at guitars from 1990. That's where we are now. 1990 was a pivotal shift. Uh, in the world of guitar playing. We were going from those shreddy, lock tremolo, fluorescent uh, 80s metal guitars, which those, if you've been paying attention to like old Kramers, old ESPs, uh, old Jacksons, old Carvins, all of those like shreddy metal guitars, they've been giant the last couple of years. All of a sudden those originals are going, you know, 2,500, three grand, where 10 years ago you could have bought them for so little because that trend just got so blown out. But now we're shifting gears to where in 1990, you started seeing metal on the decline and you started seeing alternative music uh, and grunge really become at the forefront of what was cool. So I'm convinced and I'm starting to see it already. Those obscure Gretches that people were playing uh, in alternative bands like the Duo Jets, and all of those guitars that were kind of that quintessential early 90s punk rock alternative grunge those are the guitars that are shooting up in value. So if I were you, I would set up a save search in your feed on Reverb. Uh, I, in my opinion, I think that like the Korean and the Japanese Fenders are gonna continue to just shoot up in value because those parts casters, they're cool, they're funky, they're weird, they're unusual colors, they're unusual features. I think that those are gonna continue to shoot up. And I think we're also going to see some of those like more affordable semi-hollows, some of the Epiphone semi-hollows from the 90s, I think those are gonna really start coming up in value. So if I were you, I would set up a reverb saved search in there. I would set up an eBay notification. If you use Search Tempest or if you use other search features, I would just save that into your normal rotation. What I would hope would start coming up is you start seeing some of those acoustic guitars from that same period coming up as well. I think right now the Martin D18s from the 90s, I mean, let's be honest, if you're into Martins, the Martins from the 1990s are the nerdy dad at the barbecue with the white New Balances and the and the knee-high white socks. Now you can get those 1200, 1500, and they're good solid guitars. If you can knock some of the nerdiness off of them. <laughs> So if this video helped you find badass gear that you 
love. I want to hear about it. So tell me, you can send me a message through my website. You can also connect with me on Instagram. That's a great way to interact with me. If you want to support this channel, the best way to do that is to go to Patreon, become a patron. You get cool insider info. You get some stuff before it comes live. And I do Q and A's over there. So I hope that you go and you fill the world with music and friendship. Go become a guitar hunter in all of its fullness. Find badass guitars that light your soul on fire. I'll see you guys later.